Yes, we have a question from Wendy on the live, live stream. She's asking you to comment on your thoughts on OCPs in dysbiosis and mental health, as well as contraception for teens. Oh, how much time do we have? <laughs> OCPs, my favorite political conversation. So let's just recap a few things about birth control pills. I feel like birth control pills are the number one endocrinopathy that we cause in the US and globally. And there's many reasons why I think that. I'm not sure that I can get into the details of exactly the effect of oral contraceptives on the microbiome. I can talk more indirectly about it. We know that, you know, everyone I think understands this part. We know that when you go on the oral contraceptive, it raises sex hormone binding globulin. So that reduces the amount of free testosterone that women have. What happens as a result of that? Decreased libido, about 20 to 25% have vaginal dryness because they have the kind of androgen receptor that um, basically just stops working, especially right at the introitus, the opening to the vagina. We know that it makes the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal thyroid gonadal axis less flexible. And so for the most part, you're not able to have the same sort of stress response as you do without the birth control pill. And then maybe what troubles me the most about the birth control pill is that the increase in sex hormone binding globulin does not go back to normal when you stop the pill. So there have been studies looking at what happens with sex hormone binding globulin a year out after you finish uh, being on the birth control pill, and those levels are still elevated, not to the same extent as they were when you're taking the oral contraceptive, but somewhere kind of in the middle. And so that really troubles me long term. We know that there's a number of micronutrient depletions that can happen, especially B vitamins, magnesium, there's a long list. And so what I find in my practice, especially the more gray hair I have, is that many of my patients, very few of them were able to escape the oral contraceptive. But those patients who were on it for you know two years, five years, 10 years, and so forth, they often have these micronutrient depletions, and then they come off the pill and try to get pregnant. And so they go into conception with these micronutrient depletions. And so I feel like it's an issue that we really need to understand better. I, it's one of those places where I wish we had better informed consent. And when I have a patient who's not sure if she wants to come off the pill or not, here's what really works. I say, okay, the sponge hormone, which is sex hormone binding globin, goes up, and it's going to soak up your free testosterone. Testosterone is involved in a lot of different things, not just libido, but confidence, agency, your ability to be your fullest, most empowered self in the world. And it can shrink your clitoris up to 20%. Now, I say that, and pretty much everyone's like, okay, what else do you got? <laughs> so what else is available, because I think part of this question was, okay, what's the alternative, especially in adolescence? And I wish we had more options. This is one of those places where I think women don't have the choices that they need to have, and I wish we had more options. I can't say that transdermal is better. You know, the ring has a lot of other side effects too. It's slightly better in terms of the effect on sex hormone binding globulin. I can tell you as the mother of two teenagers, I don't think the copper IUD is a great choice in an adolescent, um, although I, I give that option. What I tend to do is really teach my younger female patients about natural family planning, not as like a sole approach, because I think that is destined for a high failure rate, but to combine that with the use of condoms and also to to be able to tune into this conversation that they're having with their body and their hormones that I think is often missing because we tend to medicate it away with oral contraceptives in young women. So there's other things too. I am a big fan of the diaphragm, if you can still find one. Um, <laughs> pharmacists just don't stock them like they used to. And I, I find even for my very fertile patients when they combine these strategies, so when they're the most fertile, they have outer course as an example, or um, they combine condoms with natural family planning plus minus a diaphragm, that can be very effective. So I wish I had a better answer there.